Alrighty, so the video for today is a topic that I'm pulling off of the Columbus Division of Police uh, Facebook page, and in it, they're showing evidence that was seized during um, multiple search warrants that occurred. So here is uh, a giant stack of money, a couple large stacks of drugs, and some firearms. Here's a little bit more of uh, how it was all found. And there's a little picture of a baggie of dope. There's the money. So the reason I want to talk about this is because of the comments that I saw on this post. The comments, they don't lead me to believe, they prove that there's a large amount of people in this world who don't understand how crime works and don't understand how police work works. So I would like to enlighten you. So. Let's start off with a post and then we'll get into some of the comments. So on November 3rd, 2021 and November 4th, the Central Ohio Human Trafficking Task Force with the assistance of CPD Intac, CPD SWAT, CRT Zone 1, and patrol officers from Zones 3 and 4 executed three search warrants at locations on the west side of Columbus and Linden area. A total of 917 grams of crack cocaine and fentanyl, $188,905 in cash, two firearms, one of them stolen, a large amount of electronic evidence related to the investigation was seized on November 3rd. Information discovered during the initial two search warrants led to a third search warrant on November 4th. A total of $15,780 in cash, 17.5 grams of cocaine, one firearm, and one firearm money, <laughs> a drug press were seized during the operation. This is an ongoing investigation with the, uh, that's the acronym for the Human Trafficking Task Force. Uh, investigators are seeking an indictment for multiple targets within the next few months. The total evidence breakdown for all three search warrants, $204,685, 934.5 grams of cocaine and fentanyl with an approximate street value of $93,000, three firearms, one was stolen, a drug press, and electronic evidence. Now, this was all seized by the Human Trafficking Task Force. Let's get into some of the comments, then I'm going to get into a little bit more of it. So, I was scrolling down through, and some of the things that I saw, let's see, here's one, um, not one person traffic, trafficked in the description of what was found. It's very sad for those who are waiting for news about loved ones. Um, I saw a bunch of stuff like that. And then here's one that I actually screenshotted. What do drugs, money, and guns have to do with human trafficking? Shouldn't the human trafficking task force be going after human trafficking? Instead, you're going after or you're adding to the drug war and the war on 2A. So he thinks that by busting drug dealers and getting large amounts of drugs and money were trying to crack down on the second amendment and commerce. Those are his thoughts. Well, I'm going to tell you a little secret. Human trafficking and drugs and money are all very, very closely related. Um, there's this idea that human trafficking occurs when some guy in a van pulls up, jumps out and grabs some woman off the street. And they usually think it's a child. And then they transport them to another country and they sell them as a sex slave. Um, that is not how human trafficking works. The majority of human trafficking in the United States actually occurs because you have, usually it's a young woman who becomes addicted to drugs and in order to support her drug habit, she becomes a prostitute. The way these prostitutes work is they go out and they work the street and they basically give all of their money to their drug dealers. The drug dealers in return supply them with lots of drugs and they don't always require payment for these drugs because they know that they're going to get it eventually. Um, a couple years ago, I had an interaction with a prostitute who 
was having a very bad night. I took her to the hospital and I hung out with her for quite some time. And we had a long conversation about her life and how everything works. And she was giving me a lot of information about these guys who were running girls, forcing them to do unthinkable things and the methods of which these guys coerce these girls. Um, there's, I'll just go ahead and tell you when, when these girls wake up, wherever they are, they go out and they start walking the street. Often it's like four thirty-five in the morning. They call that the morning rush because there's a lot of dudes who are looking for prostitutes who leave work early, tell their wives they have to be at work early, but they're really just going to go pick up a hooker. So these girls get up extra early and they hit the street and they're usually pretty exhausted. So when that happens, you'll have these drug dealers running up and down the street and they'll have um, either a get well on them or they'll have a pickup. Uh, a get well is usually some form of opiate. This is for the prostitutes who are addicted to heroin and fentanyl. And it, when they wake up and they haven't had a hit for a while, they feel a little bit sick. So they give them a small dose, almost like a micro dose, just enough to make the sickness go away. And they call that a get well. These are the drug dealers who are giving the prostitutes free drugs so that they can get on the street and work. Then if a prostitute's been up for too long and maybe she's taken too many opiates and she's a little bit droopy, they'll go ahead and give her a pick me up. A pick me up will usually be some form of a uh, cocaine, whether it be crack or powder or maybe meth or some other kind of synthetic drug. They're doing this because they want these women to continue working. Um, a lot of times these drug dealers, I want to get this screen is too bright. A lot of times these drug dealers will, they'll have these, they have these houses, we call them flop houses where drug dealers will basically live for free and there's an endless supply of drugs for these people as long as they keep bringing money back into the house. So the unfortunate thing about catching these drug dealers that are running these prostitution rings and running guns and all that other stuff is that often it depends on the political climate on whether or not the police are allowed to even investigate these crimes. Right now, the uh, human trafficking is a very hot topic in the state of Ohio. The state of Ohio, per statistics and the way that they're kept, is one of the highest per capita human trafficking states in the country. One of the reasons for that is the way Ohio defines human trafficking, which I won't get too deep into, but I can just tell you that if you're a drug dealer who is supplying drugs to prostitutes and basically forcing them to work to pay for those drugs, you are now guilty of human trafficking in the state of Ohio. So these task force, like the, um, where is it? The central Ohio human trafficking task force. Yes, they are trying to crack down on the people that are trafficking in sex workers. But the best way to do that and to stop this from happening is to take away their money and their drugs. So people like this genius who say, what do drugs, money, and guns have to do with human trafficking? Well, the answer to that question is they have absolutely everything to do with human trafficking. And when people talk about legalizing these drugs and decriminalizing them and all that other stuff, what they're doing is they're protecting this kind of activity. Um, the way the officers got the information to hit these houses, the way they found out where these houses were is by usually stopping drug users and then questioning the drug users about where they got their stuff. And that information leads to these bigger scores. So unfortunately, sometimes the police have to stop somebody with a very small amount of drugs to get a little bit of information from them that will get these giant players out of the game. Um, I hope that answers some of y'all's questions. I hope you now understand a little bit better about why something like the um, human trafficking task force would be going after stacks of money and drugs. It's really unfortunate that we live in a world where people are so blind that they can't they don't understand the purpose behind these things. It's almost like the police 
might actually know what they're doing. And the people who aren't the police should maybe let the police do what they're trained to do, what they have decade upon decade upon decade of experience doing. I think those are going to be my thoughts for today. So thank you for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Oh,